Hi there, welcome to What's Happening in Brazil. Let's start with the latest news from the country. The Brazilian health regulatory agency, Anvisa, vetoed the purchase of Russian vaccine Sputnik V. According to the agency, the adenovirus used in the vaccine is able to replicate, resulting in severe health risks. Anvisa also claimed that the documents presented by the vaccine's manufacturer, the Gamalia Institute, leave important safety concerns unanswered. In a statement, the Russian laboratory affirmed that the decision is of a political nature and not scientifically based. Governors of 10 Brazilian states who bought doses of the vaccine will take the matter to the courts. The shots are currently used in 60 countries. On the other hand, Brazilian scientists support the agency's decision and call for more studies before Sputnik's liberation in Brazil. The number of deaths in the first four months of 2021 already exceeds the total of 2020. From March 12, when the first disease by COVID-19 was reported in the country, to December 31, 2020, 194,949 deaths were registered in Brazil. In 2021, between January 1st and April 26th, there were 196,987 deaths. This April was the worst month since the beginning of the pandemic. The number of infections is also high. In April 28 alone, almost 80,000 people were contaminated with the virus. According to specialists, Brazil's deaths by COVID tend to stabilize in the current level, which is very high. With that, the country might reach 600,000 deaths by the middle of the year. Despite their lack of proven effectiveness against COVID-19, treatments with drugs like chloroquine and ivermectin are still being used in Brazil. In several occasions, President Jair Bolsonaro defended and even stimulated their application. Chloroquine is at the top of the list of medications that caused side effects in the country in 2020, according to the Brazilian Health Regulatory Agency. However, the medication is still being distributed in the so-called COVID kit that includes other drugs without proven effectiveness against the disease, like ivermectin. We know that the patient might have liver problems, including drug-induced hepatitis, kidney alterations, acute kidney injury with the use of these medications, and that these are very serious conditions. I've had patients with allergic reactions to this drug, and that's a really difficult situation because the person used the whole kit, so we don't know which drug caused the allergy. According to Juana, who works in the public health system in the city of Serra Talhada, in the Pernambuco state, doctors have been pressured by the city's health secretariat to prescribe the COVID kit. All the doctors I oversee disagreed, felt insecure to prescribe these drugs, knowing how dangerous they were to the population. At the same time, they were pressured and afraid to be fired, as the situation was being imposed on them. But not all healthcare professionals are against using the kit. According to a research of the Getúlio Vargas Foundation in Brazil, one in three professionals in the area think that the public health system should use chloroquine for treating COVID-19. That worries another parcel of the professionals, like Dr. Natalie Pimentel, who lost an uncle who had the COVID kit prescribed by a doctor. I think we are facing a terrible situation. And unfortunately, I know he was not an isolated case. He was not the only one to judge the situation this way. He was not the only one to put his political beliefs above the doctor's advice. And I saw how much he suffered because of that. And now let's go to the state of Pará, where we will meet the toys made with the fibers of Buriti Zero, a local palm tree through a sustainable process recognized in Brazil and abroad. Tradition passed from generation to generation. That is the artisanal production of toys made of mirichi, a fiber extracted from buriti zero, a very common palm tree in the Amazon region. Rivaldo's family is one of the responsible for the fabrication of toys in the city of Abaitetuba. That is the main source of income of over 8,000 craftsmen living in the 72 islands that are part of the city. 
and they learned the craft early on. People who could not buy toys, especially boys in the islands, manufactured them using Mirichi, which is plentiful in the Amazon. I myself did that. I produced canoes to play in the water. I like working with pieces that move, that are drawing together. Snakes, caimans, fish, armadillos, and many other pieces whose movements I like watching. These days I work with birds, with many things, but it's all a game for me. Buritizeiro is a palm tree that can reach up to 25 meters. To extract the leaves without damaging the plant, it is important to handle it correctly. We ensure sustainability, as our production both supports the population in the forests, who produces fruits to feed their families, and leave the fruits in the forests for the species to reproduce, so they can always have individuals to collect leaves and support the craftsman's activities. Nowadays, Mirichi toys are exported and also have become museum pieces. The model of sustainable production is considered a part of Brazil's historical and cultural inheritance. And now it's time for Brazilianism. I found this recipe exploring websites of Latin American cuisine. This is a delicious corn boiled in coconut milk with pepper and spices. For today's recipe, we'll need four years of sweet corn, coconut milk, water, butter, pepper, cilantro stems, chopped ginger, minced garlic cloves, green scallions, cilantro leaves, black pepper, coriander seeds, and optionally turmeric leaves. We need soft corn for this recipe. Squeeze the kernels with your fingernail. If there's liquid dripping out of it, it's good. If not, then it's too hard. For that recipe, we need it to be very soft. Let's power the coconut milk into the pot to boil. Add the water, butter and spices, but not the salt. Put the corn into the pot and let it cook for 20 minutes. There is no need to use a pressure cooker. A regular pot will do. It cooks really fast. After 20 minutes, add the salt and let it cook for 5 more minutes. The salt will only go into the pot after the corn is cooked. If we put it before, the kernels might wilter, so only put it later on. When it's time to serve, put the corn and the broth in the serving dish and sprinkle it with chopped scallions and cilantro. It's done. It yields six portions and takes about 30 minutes to prepare. Like the show? So hit the like button and share with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to receive notifications. We'll see you next week.